Hi guys, this is Ratchet Throw, and we are playing Criminal Case, Trial in Time, Case 47, Fountain of Death. And it's a fountain that spits wine in Jax's face. Let's take some wine, shall we? Yeah. And wine stops. God! Oh no, did I break it? I don't think you did, you just put... You only put a glass beneath it, so... You didn't do anything. Well... You didn't do anything. Hey, there's a trapdoor over there. Do you think the fountain ball function because someone's hiding inside it? Could be. I need to go clean up, but you could head down there and I'll be right back. Okay. Okay, so who's beneath fountain? Okay, this is supposed to be fountain mechanism. Who's hiding there? Oh, I need a quiver. I can find a scroll, scroll, scroll. Yes! Whoa, just in time. One second left. Huh? So there's no one hiding down here. But look at that quiver of arrows. You're right, this matched the arrow we found in the victim. That means the killer came down here. We better collect some of the hair on that quiver. That jury box has the victim's name written on it. We know Tangsy oversaw the fountain's maintenance, so it makes sense to find something of hers down here. Let's get it open. And what's this for? Looks like a harness for a work animal to turn the gears under the fountain. But how would an animal get down here through the trapdoor? We should recover the engraving on the chest plate. Well, now that we know both the victim and Kira came down here, this pump room certainly depends on our investigation. No pun intended. Heh. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> okay, first let's unlock the box. Very nice. So this box with the victim's name on it holds a fancy pair of earrings. Were these a gift from her husband? That doesn't seem right. He won't have written her name in Roman script. Do you think they are a gift from another suitor? Let's get to the lab and see what Orlando can tell us. Well, yeah. It's... And now I, now I see the name... The name is a written me in Mongolian symbols. Okay, now let's let's dust whatever that is. Uh I can't read it. Hmm. Huh, Katarina? According to the tablet, the text on this harness says Wu Ming, property of the Great Khan. Wu Ming? 
That sounds like the name of a person, not a war cannibal. For me, it sounds like a slave. Kadria, we need to speak to this Wu Ming. <coughs> Damn it. <coughs> Okay, now <clears throat> the, the cleaver. Ah, what's wrong with my voice? We got a sample to hear on the killer squeaver of arrows. Let's get to Theo. And I got two analysis. Okay, let's go talk to. Yes, he's a slave. Oh, I only stepped out for some fresh air. I wasn't escaping, I promise. Wait, calm down. We're not soldiers and we don't wish you harm. We just want to talk. We found this harness under the fountain. Yes, that's mine. They make me wear it to keep me attached to the pump wheel. Then I just walk around and around for hours on end to keep the fountain flowing. Oh, so you are a slave? Yes, I was a Chinese soldier captured by the Khan. But Tangzi is the one who works us to death to keep that stupid fountain running. We understand you're in an awful situation, and it's complicated by the fact that we found Tangzi murdered earlier tonight. Tangzi is dead? Oh, no. Why the Khan comes home and finds out? What is going to happen to me? Please don't report me. I better get back to my post. Oh, I feel so sorry for him. Who gifted these earrings? It is so exciting to be here in Karakorum, Katarina. This place is such an important landmark in Mongolian history. Oh, we know Karakorum's historic silver tree fountain is in right place for travelers passing through at this time. But here, we get to actually see it in person. Yes, and drink wine from it. Who would have thought we find a booze fountain here in medieval Mongolia? Yang Dai told us the victim was in charge of the fountain, but we found her earrings in the pump room below it. But does that help our investigation at all? Of course it does. The victim's earrings were actually a gift from the man who designed the silver tree, a French goldsmith named Wallam Boucher. Or Boucher, if, it's, if you are gonna go with French accent. How can you tell? Well, the fruit, the least design of the earrings and the Roman writing of Evictus name on the boss proved that Monsieur Boucher is the one who made them. Of course. Katria, what do you suppose Guilherme Boucher's intentions were when he gave these earrings to the general's wife? Let's go ask him. And if general found out, then what would happen? He has lots of wives. Theo, what can you tell us about the hair Katria took from our killer's quiver? The sample of hair is a queen in nature. Wait, does a queen mean horse? Are you saying our killer is a horse? Or it's more logical that the killer rides a horse? Ah, yeah, that makes sense. Katria, this is the first time we got a victim from a ride by shooting. It's especially relevant here since Mongol men and women alike are extremely proficient on horseback. Well, Katia, this evidence certainly helps us pony up to catch our killer. So he was riding on a horse, then saw our victim and... Tunk. Shot her. And you're right, we already know for sure that the merchant Ayanchi rides horses to transport his supplies. Add that to our notes. Okay. Okay, now this guy. Mr. Boucher. We found the general's white tanks at the silver tree earlier tonight. Killed by an arrow through the heart. 
Oui. Quoi, Huro? Was the fountain damaged at all? Uh, no, it wasn't. We thought she might be a little more touched by the news. We found these earrings you had given her. Was there something between you? Modio, no one. I gave jewelry to each of the generals. Why should take them for their hospitality when I stayed in the plate in the palace? I stopped here in my travels and was commissioned to make a fountain to commemorate the founding of Karakorum. The silver tree is my greatest achievement. And I love this place. The people here are so wonderful. The food is magnificent. My favorite is Boo Dog. And I don't like it. I decided to learn the language. I cannot write in calligraphy. And it is so different from French calligraphy. I started to hear a tongue is dead. But try to excuse me, I have much work to do. Katria, all this talk about the silver tree makes me think I'd be good to take another look around up there. Let's go. Just don't drink. Or you can't drink because the fountain isn't working. Alright, let's look around the fountain again. Sword sheet. Got everything. Well, I'm getting everything in time in only one go. I'm getting good at this. Whoa, what's with this sword doing here? It seems strange that such a fancy weapon will be left lying around like this. And she wasn't killed with the sword, so. Hmm, that's odd. It seems to be locked in his sheet. We should take a closer look at it. And here's a torn up document. I can spot Mongolia writing, but we will need to get it reassembled before we'll have any hope of translating it. Okay. Perfect, now this document is put back together. I see animals drawn on it. This text would take me ages to put it to the tablet. Better send it to Penelope. Okay. Okay, now the sword. Let's unlock his sheet. And when you had to go into the battlefield, you would have to unlock the sheet somehow. So I don't think it's a good it's a good idea to put a lock on the sheet. Look, Katia, the crest on this sword. It's super ties. I wonder how Subutai's sword ended up at the scene of his wife's murder. Let's go talk to him. Oh well, yeah, how did it end up there? Merchants, have you found my wife's murderer yet? 
We're still on the case, General. We actually found your sword here by the silver tree. I gave that sword to Taxi to use when I'm away. She carried it sometimes when making the rounds. Taxi was very skilled with the sword, but a sword is powerless against an arrow. Ah, you have made me restless again. I hope my calligraphy would put my mind at ease and recenter myself. But now I'll be unable to focus on planning the upcoming siege. I'm going to eat my Buddha. Do not disturb me unless you have found my wife's killer. Yeah, that's the anger I was looking for in you. What's this document supposed to be? Katria, this document you brought me is a bill, stamped with a refusal. Delivery bill. Apparently the merchant Ay Ayanchin delivered a bunch of livestock to the palace. And this stamp shows that Tansy forbade him from doing further business with the palace. Oh. What? Why would she ask him like that? It's not written here. All I know is he delivered a lot of animals and then she cancelled their business together. Ayanchi can't have been happy about this. We better talk to him, Katarina. Too many animals, I guess? Okay, let's go talk to him. Let's see what's this about. Ayanchin, we found this document you wrote up for Tangsi. It appears she fired you from work with the palace. Yes, Tangsi claimed the animals I brought were substandard. I'll admit that I didn't provide palace quality animals. Much of my stock has starved or frozen to death in recent snowstorms. But then Tangsi proceeded to tell everyone in Karakorum that I was a swindler, and my other contract started to disappear. Wow, you must have been furious. There's no time to be angry when you're penniless and have to survive. I've been making do with Boo Dog. But all marwoods are scarce this time of year. I try to relax and forget how hungry I am by practicing my calligraphy, but my hand trembles with fatigue. I should go now. I still have to find food for dinner. Oh, poor guy. Well, Katria, things have gotten complicated here in medieval Mongolia. We came to see the great Khan, but you got no chance of talking to him until we find who killed his general's wife. Tangsi forbade the merchant Ayanchi from doing further business with the palace and badmouthed him all over town. And we know that Tangsi's pet project was a silver tree fountain which she had designed by a Frenchman and operated by a Chinese slave. I really hope General Subatai didn't kill Tangsi since he is the one who's supposed to introduce us to the Khan. Oh, speaking of... Hello? <laughs> Merchants, what are you doing in my palace? That have better be a good explanation for this. God, Katrina, it's a great con! Uh, we are here to give you the camel, we need to find Ammon, and we are also trying to solve Tanksy's murder. Your general can say everything. He can vouch for us. Alright, we gotta stop here, we gotta continue playing in chapter 3. So, thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave a like to this video, and I'll see you again. Goodbye!